Excuse me. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be the first in the series that I'm going to be collaborating with my good friend, Gina Farrar. She is an accredited IMDB makeup artist and she's been in the industry for 17 years. One of my favorite highlights from her career is she did makeup on dancers in Christina Aguilera's dirty music video. How fierce is that? Gina also has a YouTube channel, so I will leave that link down below so you guys can check her out. We're going to do a series called Get Glam with Gina. We'll be showing you makeup tips and tricks, some easy everyday looks, and even bring you guys some crazy couture. We're kicking off the series with this start to finish look. It's subtle enough for day and glam enough for night. I hope you guys all enjoy this look and let's get glam with Gina. Well, I'm gonna put some moisturizer on you, Tef. Okay. How have you been doing? It's been a minute, huh? I know. Like, I'm so excited you're doing my makeup again. Oh, I always love when you do my makeup. <laughs> Thank you. I know, I'm always like, hey, <laughs> do you wear this color? Great. There's nothing like hydrated skin mm -hmm. to make makeup look good. I have a lot of people ask me a lot about what do I do to make my foundation look better. My number one answer is take care of your face. Mm -hmm. You take care of your face and you're using good skincare and you need less foundation and you actually look better in the long run. More is not necessarily better. Now I've actually never put the Fix Plus on before my foundation. Does it help go on easier? It actually has glycerin in it uh -huh. so it creates a slip to the skin. But it also has vitamins A, C, and E, so it actually hydrates the skin. You can put it underneath your moisturizer, but sometimes I like to put it on first. It gives a little bit more of that glow because right now we're heading right into spring and everybody wants to see that glow in the yeah. skin. We don't want fried chicken. But we are going to go for glow, I promise. All right. You're like, fried chicken, let's do it. All right, so let's use the silicone base primer after I'm going to blow you all up. Generally, when I use a primer, I'll be honest, I don't use a primer on every single person. Yeah because it depends on what that skin needs. Uh, we start in the center. So I'm gonna work from the center out. I'm not gonna worry too much about all the way back on your cheeks, because you know, we're gonna be glowing that baby up. Yeah. <laughs> do a more natural look. I'm gonna start with something that I know you're very comfortable with. Of course. Yes. <laughs> Let's look at a good foundation for you today. We have this Estee Lauder. Okay, perfect. I've never actually worn that before. This is a unique foundation because they actually use a special tool, it's like a gun, that looks at your pigment, so it's actually specifically matched okay. to your pigment. Okay, awesome. I don't always use a beauty blender, but again, we're going for a specific skin texture. Yeah. And I feel like when you're using a beauty blender, you get that opportunity to create a skin-ishness to your foundation. Uh -huh. I've used a moisturizer, a Fix Plus, a little bit of primer, and now I'm just gonna go in and you can probably see how balanced that looks. So when we're going for this natural look, I don't wanna just focus on the makeup, I want everything to look like you're just a much more perfected version of yourself. Okay. You could do this makeup in probably 10-15 minutes to go to the grocery store, go to the bar, go to be shopping. Nothing where you're, you're not looking for the beat down necessarily. Yeah. Now I know we've talked a little bit about beard shadow. Oh my gosh, I, that's like one of my biggest problems. Like, I feel like I always do like a full face and then my mustache still shows through. What's your secret? <laughs> okay, so my secret is color theory. When it comes to dealing with shadows, you kind of need to know what the undertone of that shadow is. Okay. The undertone of your shadow is blue, which is typical for most beards. I was on a film once and we were, the guy looked great. We did like three different locations. We got into this hallway mm -hmm. and all of a sudden we're looking at the monitor and we're like, oh my gosh, he's blue. Why does he look blue? <laughs> the walls were blue, oh kind of like sky blue, but we didn't realize and it. He looked great in every other room. All of a sudden, we're like flying in, getting rid of the blue beard. Mm -hmm. It was like super blue. And you could the camera was like wah, 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 on yeah. the blue. So that's basically when you have a beard shadow, thinking about the environment you're gonna be in, you know, typically you're gonna be fine, you're gonna be in a blue or a gray hallway, but those colors will pull. Okay. So if you change lighting and you get into an environment where the light's not true white or you have a lot of blue around you, it can actually reflect a bit. That is the water's nice. Mm -hmm. But I only used a little bit because I didn't want I want your skin to be pretty. We're going to add a little bit of glow back in, but really, can you turn your head for me? Mm. That's gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you 
2.0. Okay. We're going to work with a little bit of color correction. So when you're talking about beard shadow, we're talking about usually blues or greens. So the opposite to that is going to be an orange or a red base, even on someone as fair as myself. Okay. Typically, someone as fair as myself doesn't have the same shadow. It's, it's more often somebody with darker hair. Yeah. It's really the challenge. What I'm going to do is take a flat head brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of this. It looks a little scary because now I've just given him an orange mustache. <laughs> but you have to trust the process. This is a bit of a fine art. You'll find the balance for yourself. But the key is in the product being put on the skin and not shifted on the skin. So I'm going to take one of my lighter concealers here. Same brush. When you go dark, you have to go light to counterbalance it. So this concealer is actually a bit lighter than your skin. But uh -huh. because we've started with that coral, we can see that you're... You're already starting to have that disappear. You're already being able to see that it's going away. And you're just putting the light color directly on top of the orange? Mm hmm Oh, okay. And I just push. I know we've talked about this before. Remember, you were like, how come it doesn't work for me and it mm -hmm. works for you? Yeah. It's usually overworking. People want to keep and mm -hmm. keep. And it just, it's like put it on and get it blended and stop. Just yeah. stop. I usually, whenever I attempt to color correct my mustache, mm -hmm. I do it underneath the foundation. Is that the problem? I generally, okay, yes. It, it, here's the problem. When you're layering wet products, you're actually creating slippery layers. Okay. So if you notice when I put the foundation on, the last area that I touched was your chin. I just wanted to even it out because I know I'm going to go back with extra product. Yeah. If we go full and then full, this area of your face is now going to push heavy to the eye, so it's not going to look natural. So if we go hit the full everywhere and then just kind of balance and then go back in, you're actually going to get a more natural payoff. Oh. So now I'm going to take a little bit more of that foundation. Just, and here's the thing, you have to kind of fade it out. If you just covered your mustache and mm -hmm. left it like that, it's mm -hmm. going to end up looking like you just put your face. Yeah. Do you understand? Like face planted right near the concealer. So go ahead and, and work on the edges a little bit so that it fades out. That's how I look. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hide that beard. It's actually a mustache, but. All right, let's get underneath your eyes a little bit with a concealer. And I think the other thing, too, when you do this kind of concealing, it's kind of a nice idea to let that orange sit for a while because everybody's skin is different and some people will oxidize it okay. pretty aggressively. Mm -hmm. And that's where it becomes a science. Where you're like, okay, how much how much can you get away with? Yeah. Until you start looking like you've been eating Cheetos. You know? <laughs> it was not what we're going for. <laughs> Look up for me. My technique as far as concealer goes, because you have a lot of pink underneath your eye. Yeah. I'm going to concentrate it in the inner corner because we're drawing the attention in. So what's left on my brush is going to do your lash line. I'm not putting concealer out there. We're not going to bake anything today. We know that uh, your followers are masters at baking. So yeah. we're gonna go <laughs> They've seen it. They know yes. how to bake. They know how to bake. <laughs> They're chefs in their own right, right? <laughs> Let's do an eyeshadow base. A little eyeshadow base on. We're going to use a 24-hour eye base. It doesn't have any color. This is probably something that I think your um, your subscribers will enjoy. Okay. Because eyebrows, I think, are that, that thing that people feel intimidated by. So what I like to do is start with the brow that's the most challenging. You start with the most challenging brow, get that one the way you like, then you can get the one you like. I'm going to go ahead and use this Dior one. This is amazing, it's actually, it's color matching. I like to lay the foundation to the brow first. So I basically literally put a line. Then I build on top of it, following that brow ridge, you know, it's pretty. So what we have now is the foundation. We just have the bottom. So I usually like to go to the top of the brow next and create my shape. Now, some people like a really sharp, but because we're going for the natural look, we're going to keep it a little softer. You know, we were talking about your eyebrows and yeah. we were worried about that little more. Right yeah. There. How do you like, I kind of put a little trick of a Yeah, I like it. That. I like it. It's way better. Yeah. Well, I think you need that balance. And that's one of those things, finishing up the eyebrow conversation. Kind of corner of the nose, corner of the eye. Yeah. All right. So let's use... Master palette. Yes. Yes. I'm going to use a blending brush through your crease. I actually do the crease first, and I know you know this, but I'm just going to share because this is like I'm creating 
a transition color that will help everything else blend. A blending brush can be used any way you want as long as it stays in contact with the skin. It really comes down to um, what motion you like, but if you leave it in contact with the skin, it works its best. That's We call it a magic wand. And if you hold the handle further out, mm -hmm. you get a little more play off the brush, which is nice. I think I'm going to use more of a gold. Let's do Fifth Avenue and just blend our way out using just a flat shader brush. This is just a really pretty look, kind of transitioning from our Winter to spring, in yeah. California, we've been pre-menopausal, so we have spring one day, winter another, and then summer the third day. <laughs> no problem. I'm just going to take my blending brush and kind of marry the two. I really want that crease color to be more of a background. I'm going to switch to another Anastasia palette just because. <laughs> and welcome to my world, because I can. I think I'm actually going to use this reddish brown. We talk a little bit about color theory. You know, if you have... A lot of people get stressed out about having brown eyes, like there's nothing interesting about brown eyes. And I'm going to argue that brown eyes are actually very fascinating because there's green brown, there's red brown, there's yellow brown, there's orange brown. And depending on that undertone in your brown eye, you can really manipulate that and give almost like a glittery effect to your eye color. It almost makes it um, look like you have a sparkle to your eye. So there's a brightness to your eye and the colors that we use are going to emphasize that. Again, we're going for a more natural look today, which I know you're totally comfortable with. Yes. <laughs> so we're not pushing your limits at all today. Okay, I'm going to jump to your cheeks really quick because sometimes if we get all lost in our eyeshadow, we end up with this kind of inability to see the end result. Yeah. Even those purple clips out. Use more of a paddle blush brush. I want you to look like you've flushed a little. It's a warm day. We don't have. I know blush on you is more of a natural thing. You're, mm -hmm. not the, you're not the beat down at the moment, so. But you have great bone structure, so what we're going to do is massage underneath your cheekbone, come along your temple, and up into your hairline here. That way the warmth kind of carries around the face. It's kind of like you would with bronzer. Mm hmm but with my blush. But you know what's coming next. <laughs> <laughs> the whole world knows what's coming next. <laughs> Sometimes I actually put my highlighter down first. Mm -hmm. But when I'm doing a more natural look, I like the blush to sit for a second. I get a real feel for how it's going to blend into the skin. Because I want you to look like you've been outside. Yeah. Highlighter. Highlighter. <laughs> Alright, we're going to be we're gonna be calm. There we go. So now, instead of being like the hit me with your yeah. best shot, <laughs> which I like that look, don't get me wrong. You know, I'm not knocking it. Turn your head that way for me. We're actually, we're actually um, pushing it into the skin with a little bit of moisture. And it pulls the glitter down a little, which, like I said, we're going natural. We want the glow, but we may not want the glitter as much. Yeah. Let's do pink. Okay. Only because I think that's going to support. I'm going to hit just right next to your eye. We already have that gold particle. Yeah. This is where the natural might get lost. Not going to lie. I don't always do a brow highlight, by the way. I don't either. I think your skin has a nice color, so it's not really necessary. Ooh, yes. I'm gonna put lips on, then we'll finish your eyes. Okay. Yes, yeah, Chanel. <laughs> Chanel kills lip gloss, don't they? They're so comfortable and they're not sticky. It's one of those things where you, you, you use a napkin or something, and <laughs> for the rest of the day, you're like, there's fuzz stuck to my face. Your lip has a nice pink tone to it. All right, let's do the finish the eye. Let's do a daytime soft shadow. That'll be better, and then we'll throw lashes on top. Okay. You know what? I think I'll actually use the same shade I did your outer crease with. Okay. Because it's that red brown. This can be a really nice way to, to create fullness. Mm -hmm. You still get the effect of a definition, mm -hmm. but it gives you a little bit more of a, like I said, a daytime natural look. See how much more defined? It really does, yeah. But it's just shadow. It really does add definition. Mm hmm. And really, what's the point of eyeliner? Yeah. And it's super simple. Anybody can do that, just using shadow. Mm -hmm. I suppose because I feel like a lot of people are intimidated by liner. Well, liquid is intimidating because, like I said, that ends up in places you're like, how? How did it end up there? <laughs> I'm going to take the same uh, shader brush that I used earlier. Okay. I'm going to take a tiny bit. Look up for me. I'm just going to give you a bit of an outer smudge. What do you think? Just a little. Yeah. Nothing too threatening. You can always buff to make it fuller. So, in other words, don't try to get zero to 60 in one shot. The other tip that I wanted to share with you is going back to that brush that we put your concealer on with yeah. earlier. 
you can actually take that brush and just buff the bottom of that shadow. Can you see the difference there? It tightens it up a little bit. It's almost like an eraser. So you can go back in. So it's just little tweaks. And I think that's the challenge is people don't recognize that it's the little tweaks. Yeah. Now, this is a pretty glamorous daytime look. <laughs> but we're keeping the lips yeah. calm. We've <laughs> muted the highlighter. We're behaving ourselves for the most part. <laughs> what can you like expect? Daytime. <laughs> <laughs> and bam, so natural. Now I can go buy my groceries. <laughs> so that's looking really good. You know what's kind of a fun thing to do too that I sometimes do at the end of an eyeshadow? I'm going to take a, a, this is actually a matte powder called Medium Golden, and I'm going to use this quote unquote as your brow highlight, but basically I'm going to use it to create a skin, a skin look and buff down your crease. Look at that. Yeah. You see it? Yeah. So it's in your skin tone. There we yeah, go. Like See how I warm that inner corner? Mm -hmm. That's a nice thing to do when you do your crease, so it's not so much like, you know, this windshield wiper, you kind of work that inner corner. All right, let's get some mascara on you. I'm not putting a ton of mascara because I really want to make sure that we... Isn't that funny when someone does your eyes on yeah. your mascara? Like, <laughs> they don't want to look like, don't want to bring this. <laughs> I'm going to poke my eyes up. I'm going to press the mascara into your lash line, like push it next to your lashes Yeah. in your eye rim because that gives us a fuller effect. You have nice long lower lashes, but I can make them a little bit more feathery. So instead of like rocking the mascara one through the lashes, I'm gonna use the tip and push it into your waterline basically, and then just pull it through. It's just a little bit softer. Yeah. Turn your head side to side, let's get a hit of that glow. Ooh. Yes. Yes, yes. very I'm good. good for it. All right. Thank you guys again so much for watching this video. And Gina, thank you so much for being here and doing this video with me. Hopefully we could do another one together again. Yes, we need to do a beat down next time. Oh my gosh, yeah. of course. Full yeah. glam everything. Glitter. <laughs> this is lashes. So yes. So thank you guys again so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Excuse me.